What is there to say about American politics that has not been said? We have comfortably lived in our two-party duopoly for the course of our republic. Certainly, there have been third-party candidates and parties that have emerged over the years, but it has always remained a static state of two parties. No more, no less. When I was younger, Ross Perot caught my attention as someone who was saying what I was thinking as a young man. The country needed to be managed better, run like a business, and the industry that had rotted out the core of the country through wars and spending needed to be reined in. He was quirky and probably oversimplified the problems, but his inclination toward the fixing of America hit the nail on the head. We were broke then, and we had overdone everything about being a superpower. The Republicans were in trouble in 1992. Pat Buchanan had called out George Bush Sr. for his abandonment of the United States to global interests. It was one of the most accelerated declines for a sitting president in history. Bush had been a wildly popular president, who had presided over a war just 12 months prior but then lost his first primary and was a weakened candidate from there. Perot had a real shot until he was attacked by the major machine of the parties and dropped out in the middle of the summer before the election. Ultimately, he jumped back in, took enough votes from Bush to be a spoiler, and Bill Clinton won the election with less than 50% of the vote and a pretty substantial electoral college victory. From that moment on, the parties had a very significant interest in keeping their system intact. Perot showed what could be possible with a strong candidate with good ideas. Perot wasn't a conservative that outflanked Bush. He wasn't a Democrat that outdemocrated Clinton. He was a man with a great track record of success in business and wanted to see America succeed as a true leader in a realigning world. But the parties maligned and impugned him, trashing him on everything from talk radio to national television, and the status quo stayed exactly the same as it ever was. The two-party system is a wonderful thing, but it is not graven on the soul of man by the finger of God. There are occasions when a serious politician will say, there are serious forces in the country that are not being responded to in a political market failure, and a third party is required. George Will. The two-party system has served the system exceptionally well. The politicians stay longer, the money gets much larger, the perks and named bridges and connections for stock become the lifestyle that cannot be rejected. If you were born after the year 2000, you have spent exactly 100% of your life with the United States engaged in war. You have seen the national debt increase more than six times from what it was in 2000. You have watched candidate after elected official promise all the change and hope you could ever want, all to be less able to afford the daily staples that life requires be more fearful of war than any time since the Cold War, and have more vitriol for your neighbor than at any time since the Civil War. The country feels perilously endangered, and the conversations are fleeting. Open up X or Instagram, and you can feel the need to retreat to the shadows from the loud voices that dominate the feeds. Rationality and conversations about the best ideas are nearly impossible to surmise. So is it any wonder that into this foray comes a third-party candidate who might be saying that there is a political market failure of epic proportions? Robert F. Kennedy Jr. seems to be that sounding voice in a difficult moment of history. He is calling out things that both the traditional right and the traditional left have both held positions on. He's asking for the American people to resurrect their capabilities at political compromise in order to advance our civilization away from the brink of destruction and back onto the ever-rising road that has been the American experiment. There's a sense by Mr. Kennedy that the solutions are not nearly as difficult as the duopoly has made it. His speech in Philadelphia contained so many appeals to the average American that resonated with the heart of the majority. His best quotes were a lesson in clarity about what the soul of the citizen is feeling. Mr. Kennedy explained, instead of two parties, we have a uni party a monster with two faces, loudly bickering with itself as it lumbers over a cliff. At the bottom lies the destruction of our country. And people suspect that the divisions are deliberately orchestrated and that getting us to hate each other is part of the scam. They're fed up with being fooled and they're ready to take back their power. He's channeling some of the great disruptors from our history, his uncle, FDR, and Teddy Roosevelt, when he points out that something's gone very wrong in this game, and it's going to take a massive disruption to fix it. Time will tell if his candidacy can catch wind, but the sentiment is there. The party system has failed us, and we can either tear that down, 
or tear one another down in the confines of a bloody revolution. The choice is ours, but we need to be focused on the instigator that has caused the trouble, or we will surely surrender our society to anger and division, and ultimately, death. <laughs>